people are joining me and i'm just setting it up and it is gone live but we are uh, going to just set up the setting up part so just so you know my son's name is rajat nair and my mom's name is formula yeah till so join in with that name i think and we are live i'm uh, going to just set up the setting up okay see that's what happens it starts echoing and then we go live and everything is set and and we are here back with my 88th mom steadily going towards my 100 mark it's looking like you know it's um i'm all geared up to now finish it in the next 10 days the next 12 uh, months are going to be interviews and done and we already have people watching in this is so special uh, like many interviews but this has been special because um uh, i have i've been keeping sangeeta's story in my in my heart and telling people that like just the stories and either of your son surviving on uh, potato, a rice and dal for two years, I think. For one and a half, yeah. Yeah, and I keep telling my son, you can eat that too. If he can survive there, so I have two kids, young ones. But I keep your story in my heart because it's very, very, very special. I have a beautiful mom here. Sangeeta is here and as I always say, mums who live their story, tell their story the best. I have nobody to tell their biodata, what their story has been. Let them take it to the flow. Sangeeta, welcome to the book. It's an honor to have somebody like you in the book. And I am very happy and very thrilled today that it happened and uh, we made it. Uh, so please introduce yourself and your journey till here. And then the next question would be about you as a mom. And uh, then uh, further we'll keep going uh, with these questions. So go ahead. Shikha, firstly, thanks so much for including me. It's an honor for me actually to be a part of this. I did find your entire um, initiative uh, very interesting and very touching as well, because it's not very often that uh, people uh, go to the level of the moms to know their stories. So uh, thank you for that. And thank you for including me. Um, so a bit about my background, uh, right now I'm sitting in uh, Switzerland, it's COVID time, so working from home. And uh, otherwise my journey pretty much began in uh, India. I was born uh, in an uh, army family, um, had a very loving um, uh, par uh, parent and friend circle and relatives, uh, grew up in a very, very warm and uh, comfortable environment. And uh, then I went ahead. Um, I think my mom had more ambitions for me than I had. So went ahead and did my studies in, in pharma. And uh, thereafter, um, India was at that point in time in 92, way, way, way back. They were taking uh, women officers for the first time in the Air Force. So although I had done my uh, masters in pharma, uh, my sister had seen the advertisement and she was applying. So I asked her to apply for me as well and uh, went in through the uh, exercise of getting selected. It was like we were 12 women out of uh, 24,000 applicants to be selected. And uh, yeah, so um, went through all of that successfully. And then I got my um, call letter. At the same time, I was supposed to go abroad and study. So I had to make this choice of, okay, do I do my MS PhD in pharma or do I join the military? And like I said, I came from a 4G background myself, an army background, and uh, it was, I think, the heart tugged a little more towards that end. And I saw myself uh, in the Air Force, and that was in 93 that we got uh, commissioned. And um, yeah, I was posted to very interesting uh, places. The first one was Bagdogra. It was like not even in the map. And I was like, where have they sent me? So uh, went through for that, then came back as an instructor to the um, academy, then went to uh, Leh. I was there during the Kargil Ops and uh, Bangalore. And then after a while, I kind of hung my uniform because at uh, that point in time, the Indian government didn't know what to do with us. We were like on trial basis and I didn't want to risk my career. So I went in and uh, did my MBA, evening college and worked and then finally got into the corporate sector uh, back into the pharma industry. So I was there for a uh, good many years. Uh, I started like from the ranks, 
uh, I was like the technical associate to the CEO and then eventually was heading the business development in uh, one of the companies in um, India. And um, during that period, I had a huge uh, personal setback. I lost my husband and my son was in the 12th grade at that point, actually transitioning 11 to 12. And um, he finished his studies, uh, had to go through a lot, so did I. And uh, then he went in to do his uh, graduation in, um, in Ireland, in Dublin, in Trinity College. Uh, at that point in time, I found it extremely difficult to live in the environment that I was living in. So I kind of bailed out and I had requested for a move to um, preferably Dublin. My, the company that I was in was like super good. They uh, did tell me that there wasn't anything in Dublin, but if I wanted, I could try Switzerland. They had a suitable role for me. And uh, yeah, I mean, at that point in time where I was, it didn't seem that anything could be more difficult than where I was. Things could only get better. So I moved without anything. I kind of emptied my house, uh, called in the uh, people from the destitute place and furniture, every, everything in Bangalore, cleared out my house and uh, came with very little to Switzerland to start afresh. And uh, yeah, I'm here now, it's six and a half years. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good, okay, yeah. Um, may I say that you've been very, very humble about what you've just said. And uh, sorry, I was trying to adjust and sorry there was a disturbance because Whenever you go live, the children come in and they talk. Perfect. <laughs> That's the way it is. And, talk, and you, know, you know what it was? It was a candy uh, thing you found. And he just came, I confiscated that, and then he took my phone. So at least he got something out of the live. Uh, he didn't get the candy, but he just knocked my older one. My friends are, you're going to have candy. And I'm just like, last 10 days, I've not done any interviews, and you've not disturbed me. Now you have to. So sorry about that. No, no, no. Uh, but. but but you've been so humble about what you just said. I must tell you that I've heard a story and my heart has been carrying that story. So I must say that we will move forward with that little, little intricate stuff that you were talking about, the, the delicate moments, the moments where you showed up as a mom, you showed up as, you know, you were one of the first 12 officers in 24,000 applications and I must Honestly, because you've been in the Air Force, I have to salute you from uh, a citizen for uh, being one of the 12 women uh, in 24,000 uh, applicants and then going to these places and then shining there and not, not only shining as an officer, but also shining as a mom. And that's why you're very special, Sanita. And I, I know better. I've always been saying that I've missed your uh, an army officer in the book and I have to get one uh, from so I've got one and such an inspiring story so we will move into the thing of you being a mom because uh, you being a mom is uh, what this book is all about and uh, uh, once you became I'm very proud of you I just can't, I don't have enough words I saw those pictures on your profile recently I think you shared it again one of the 12 women who were selected and there was a newspaper clipping which went, I think, I was just trying yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. You saw that. <laughs> I just saw that. I, I was just trying to get your photo for the for the uh, picture. If I was just trying to see that which picture should I take and then I saw that clipping and it just gave me goosebumps. And it's a very proud moment when um, you see something like that. So, um, let's go ahead. And then you became a mom. Start from there. And then you became okay, a mom. Then... <laughs> I hope my son's not already hearing me, but I think becoming a mom was, uh, I think, unplanned, more accidental. So I, I don't think I was the most excited person when I heard that I was becoming a mom. I was, uh, in my opinion, relatively young, had the world at my feet and uh, going to be posted out soon. So going to be going to a place solo and um, early part of pregnancy is not easy so I think I was a little in tears when I heard that I was becoming a mom but because my husband was so excited I was like okay one of us is very excited and uh, yeah so I was posted out uh, at that point in time and firstly I didn't even know that uh, 
uh, I was pregnant until uh, I think one of the officer's wife said, hi, I think you need to check up because I was not able to stomach anything. But yeah, so I uh, had to go to a new place and um, get it transferred without my husband. And uh, during the early stages, it's not so easy. But um, yeah, so became a mom, which was okay. And then we got uh, transferred to uh, Lay, which is a non-family station. And logically, most of the people would leave their, you know, very little children who are like, one and a half or two years old would leave them with their parents or their in-laws and uh, because that's a non-family station so for me it was like no it was a very logical thing that where I go he goes as well so little Rajat was there with uh, with us and we were like living in those single mud rooms now I think the situation is much better I'm talking about 99 2000 where you know it was it was like pretty, pretty backward, uh, not much of running water, food I've would be. I've been to lay for 14 days, like I took the right uh, by car and I exactly know and it's unbelievable. So staying there, yeah. even, uh, 40 minutes stop in the middle, uh, outside lay and all is so tough. Just to be I was honest. super cold. I mean, it was like in minus double digits and, you know, it's not like the cold over here That's and things bad. like that. Letting the audience know because they're going to start breaking up to see the replays and oxygen yeah. Uh, also. Yeah, good. oxygen content, right? And uh, Rajat is really tiny. We used to pack him, and they were mainly bachelors around. So when my husband and I had to go on a work, he, along with his little food package, was tra transferred to whichever officer was not on duty. And uh, yeah, they would have a good time with him, and I think he did too. And uh, like I was mentioning to you, I didn't want him to have the uh, mess food all the time because it's not the healthiest. They put a lot of oil in it. And, you know, the eggs were like powdered eggs or dried onions, which are reconstituted and cooked. So this poor child used to have this pressure cooker, may, one pressure cooker, there would be rice and dal and potato and, an, and one egg, which would be his staple for uh, yeah for a pretty long time it's just that i guess he didn't know there was anything more than that so he didn't know what he missed so yeah it was, it was fun yeah, but you know children never know what they miss yeah that fact like whatever you like the way you're raising them they don't know what they miss but um we know what they're missing and uh to be yeah that used to be like some yeah so as a mom to know that you have to keep going on and on and doing the same thing and then like saying one more day all right one more day all right we're going to do this for one more day and that's the that's that's why this book is coming out because this is what mothers do and like you just said that he didn't miss anything but for you as a mom as a journey to be able to see that happen to you know uh, a child who's that young, uh, you know, in a place that's for kilometers, yeah. kilometers, there's no human life, you know, and um, you only have your own batchmates with no children and probably very less women, I'm assuming, or no women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very, very few women, and yeah, like during few. the summers, families would come in for a holiday, but uh, not during the, the winters. That's totally inspiring and that is the story that needs to come out because you know as as moms sometimes we feel very stuck and we feel that the situation is stuck and when you hear a story like that you feel very uh, every possibility that's there to raise your children and raise them healthy and raise them happy and raise them uh, you know so again 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 that story of me that like that is an image of me the pressure cooker the third thing every single day and he being wrapped up, and he also mentioned, I remember, he used to be wrapped up even in your jeep behind when you used to be patrolling and, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we used to, used to just wrap him up and take him along behind the yeah. back seat. He's asleep and we do the guard checks. Sometimes you have to do that, you know, because you don't know where to keep him, but. You know. Beautiful. It's a beautiful story because this needs to be told. And thank you for allowing us to tell this story with, um, because many, 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 Army officer moms uh, who go through this every single day or up, you know, Air Force, Army, Navy, um, um, any country. I'm sure it's happening to moms everywhere. So, yeah. 
Yeah, work. and also like, you know, in the mornings you leave to work really early, 6.45, 7, and you leave your kid behind. When they're very little, you have to get back to work. There's no concept of, you know, extended uh, leave periods and things like that in the, uh, like in the civil sector. So those were also difficult times where, you know, my son wouldn't sleep at night. He would try to keep awake as much as possible, uh, possible because he would feel that in the morning when he wakes up, he's not going to find his mom around, you know. So those little things, of course, they're still sometimes like, hmm, yeah, but... Not really. Do what you have to do. So much grace, and I see it in in, in you, um, Sangeeta. And you know, honestly, the day I kept, I like the minute I kept the call with you, and um, I was avoiding a party. I was avoiding a dinner party where my husband really wanted me to be there because I was just saying that my younger one needs to sleep at seven thirty. He's going to get cranky at seven thirty, and um, you know, your party going to get spoiled because he's a golfer and it was a golf tournament starting and. And he said, fine. And then I turned around and I said, no, if Sangeeta can wrap up her child into the, into the Jeep and put him back, this guy is going to sleep in the car and he's going to attend his dad's golf, uh, this thing, you know, he's not going to miss it. And that's the strength that I sweet. <laughs> no, it is because, you know, when you're living in cities, when you're living in things, and then that's what I'm saying. And I am going to be very open about it because I'm leading this movement that each mom which is coming in is opening up many channels for many moms who get stuck. And it's not necessarily to say that you need to have something very big that you're stuck. Sometimes you're stuck in a very small thing and the thing like that just inspires you to say. And that was my first dinner in one and a half, two years since he's been born post-COVID. And I took him and he was fine and he was munching things. I'm like, wow, he's not even sleepy, he's not even cranky. This was all assumption. So it's a small incident, but in, in in the whole comparison of him being put behind, because I'm a photographer, right? Him being put behind right there, um, it's amazing. So that's why you're very inspiring. And then um, you move forward and um, we had, you know, uh, you move forward and you came back and then you joined the corporate world. We should just take it from there, uh, what happened? Yeah, I mean, um, well, when I came back um, and came, to the to the base i was posted to bangalore and you know i was um to then i had by then i had decided that i would join the corporate sector because i had done my m farm and i was really not sure what the indian government would do with us so i didn't want to really risk it so i i had to start uh, you know thinking about corporate sector and i was 11 years in the air force which kind of gave me gave me a sense of being a little redundant in the normal uh, corporate world. And from what I saw outside, I, including my dad and other people, uh, the military guys are not, not, you know, super successful in adjusting and acclimatizing to uh, corporate life because uh, I think the uh, life rules uh, are, uh, and social conduct is very different in the military as opposed to the corporate sector. So I felt a little inadequate to be honest. So I decided to do an MBA and that was an evening college because I was very sure the way I've been brought up, you know, like you need to stand on your feet, you need to stand on your feet. So I didn't want to like leave my job and then do an MBA. So I was, I had a little kid who was by then perhaps around four or four plus and I had to do an evening college MBA for three years because a corporate MBA evening college is three years. I would leave to office by seven in the morning and then, you know, after office, then come back quick bite, sometimes directly from office straight to college and come back at 10, 30, 11 at night. My son would be waiting, uh, help him with the studies and in the morning, you know, get him uh, ready for work. And I remember one episode where I used to feel guilty, you know, because I somehow felt I wasn't giving him as much as he should. So, and in the morning, it's a huge rush. I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm trying to, you know, iron his shirt and get him uh, to wear a shirt and feel, you know, like what kind of a mom I am, you know, what kind of a job I'm doing. But uh, the thing is the beauty in all of this, and this really um, struck me was, I don't know when this conversation came up and 
somebody had asked him, I don't think he even remembers now, what's the best thing that he likes? And he says, after my bath, to come and wear a warm shirt, you know, <laughs> warm iron shirt. And I was looking at, at that as a failure where, you know, I'm not able to plan and keep his clothes all ready for it. And it's like last minute. But for him, it was like, you know, that's the nice thing of wearing a nice warm shirt out. <laughs> so, yeah, so... I mean, finally, I did join. Um, I managed to finish my MBA, uh, which which actually took, which was quite hard to manage everything else. Joined the corporate sector, started life from scratch, and uh, that I think after some point in time, uh, we gained a rhythm. And you know, his studies and everything. My husband was, was still in the Air Force, so he was posted at different places, and he would come in on vacation. And I really didn't get so much of vacation, so I couldn't spend as much time at home. Uh, and uh, yeah, so my husband used to spend a lot of the vacation time with Rajats and, um, and I did as much as I could. I'm hoping a decent job, but <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, what it was. The problem of all mothers, they all keep, all mothers keep saying that, I hope I'm doing a good job. I hope I'm doing a good job. In spite of all the, whatever you're doing, I think that's a common thing. And that's why this project came together because I just thought it was me and then I thought it was India and then I thought it like it just exploded and it was world over. Uh, every, everyone felt like that. Mothers felt like that. Before we uh, go further, just send a message. Your mom is trying to she just tell her stay, stay there, not to leave. I think your son also joined in. Just tell both of them stay there for five more minutes and we are getting them in. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me get... Because I just want to discuss uh, one thing and then we get them in. Uh, yeah. And meanwhile... Um, I'm just going to load this. Uh, Facebook just got. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Yes, and I. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I just want. Uh, Okay, so yeah, I had two waitings and we're doing something special we've not done and uh, that's a gift because eventually these interviews all will become history and I know this book is only becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and all these hundred mums are going to be on YouTube, They put these, these interviews are going to be watched again and again because once you make that mark of hundred mums in the book, um, yours is going to be again uh, one of the rare interviews where you're going to join in with the family and uh, I could do that much for you. And it happened naturally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, before we move on um, and, uh, you know, the whole, the whole thing happened and then you lost your husband and that period was very, very tough for you. So yeah. not getting too much in, but briefly if we can get um, into that and then because again, these things are coming out to inspire many mothers who go through what you go through. Each of these 88 moms have gone through and some mother will relate to it and say, if Sunita can do it, so can I. So this message is for, for, for that mother who will one day listen to it or see you in the book or see this interview and say, Sunita can do it. I'm definitely one of the mothers who already says, if Sunita can do this, I can. Uh, but uh, there'll be many more, I'm sure. So we talk about that. We'll just quickly then talk about the self-portrait and then we'll get your family in. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so um, that clearly was, I think, one of the <clears throat> most difficult times in my life. It was almost um, eight months and uh, extremely complicated because, uh, you know, my son, my husband was posted to Delhi when um, he was detected with um, cancer and it was, uh, and he was just 42 at that point in time. And he was admitted uh, to the Delhi RNR hospital, which is one of the foremost uh, places for therapy. And they told us there's only a 5% risk. So firstly, coming to terms with that, you never think that it'll happen to you. You always hear it outside and you know, there was no history or anything to, um, you know, for us to be prepared for both Rajat and I. And, and I was at that stage where 
on the one hand, I had to uh, manage my work uh, because uh, we were going through a very large transaction. And at that point in time, I was uh, holding, I was heading the business development for the pharmaceutical company that I was working in. So on the one hand that was happening, my son was in the 11th grade and I was trying to shield him. And the third, my husband going through this therapy where in the military hospital, you can't go and stay and be there. You know, it's like timings. And I was Monday to Friday in, in uh, Bangalore, Friday evening, take a flight and go there to be with him till Sunday and stay uh, somewhere outside and spend the time there with him and then come back and he went through surgery. And, um, you know, at that point in time, a lot of things happen where you feel you could have done better. You're trying to protect your son. You're trying to protect, you, you don't know what's going to happen. There's your job at stake. There's, you know, your husband where you're just standing and, and watching the whole show. And there's pretty much very little that one can do about it. So I think that was one of the most difficult phases that uh, I had to go through and also my son, I think it kind of damaged, uh, I mean, you know, your life crashes, you don't know how you'll even carry on. So, yeah, so that impacted us quite a bit and uh, especially uh, Rajat because he was in the 12th grade and um, I think he also couldn't spend as much time with his dad a, because where he was studying and I mean, we never thought that it would end in, in this way. We thought he'd get, come back home. So he couldn't get to spend time. So that was behind, you know, at the back of his mind and it wasn't easy for him to see his dad like that either. So he suffered quite a bit and he had to finish his 12th grade. And seriously, I think it was a miracle. He did outstandingly well where we were at a stage where we thought that perhaps he won't even be able to clear the exam and whether we should delay it. And he was like, you know, one day, two days before the board exams in physics, he's like, mom, I don't think I can do anything. I, I can't even, I don't remember anything. And we are like, okay. It was like a military exercise that we did, you know, 48 hours, hour to hour, uh, sitting together and uh, you know going through all of that and and seriously he did so well which was amazing and yeah that's something that you don't recover but you try to get your life into a different normal you know and I think it's been our endeavor both him and mine to be able to move on with life with a different normal yeah I love I love the way you are putting it, um, uh, Sangeeta. And I, I I you know on I've said it a lot of times, but since uh, since I had my last conversation with you, I I'm definitely living your story. And uh, you have a book, you have a whole book in you that needs to come out to inspire the world uh, with this. And uh, you'll be amazed that you know in one of the months. Uh, one of the moms I was interviewing once and she said, um, you know, I was telling them that I was just joking about something about my children that my children ask me, how do you know what I'm up to? And I always tell them, oh, I'm a mom. I know what you're up to. Uh, but she said, uh, she's, a, she's a Sufi singer and she said, do you know, even they know what you're up to? Did you ever see it like that? They exactly know how you feel. They exactly know what you're up to. They exactly can see your faces, even if you try to hide it. And they do their best. They do yeah, their no, I agree. Way, in their own way to cover up that whole thing that Absolutely. they step up, they do that. And I'm sure Rajat stepped up without consciously knowing it, but subconsciously knowing it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Step up. And that's the miracle, you know, it all happened and it all fell in place because he stepped up right next to you. when. You Absolutely. Know. Yeah, he's been a yeah, huge... So it goes to him for sure, for being that, that soul who could, who could step up and see it and, you know, shine in those uh, scores and everything and uh, yeah. uh, and that's that's the miracle of this mother child relationship you know and i'm yeah. learning so much through these moms and in the views change and now i see my son seeing me uh, and uh, i pay attention to what he's saying and just recently i, I must say this that 
Um, I was telling him, he just started something and saying, I'm sure you will not like what I've just drawn. And I'm like, listen, I don't like any sentences starting with a negative thing just in the beginning, right? So if you start with positive, maybe we end up positive. Something, some gyan I was giving him. He's, he's like eight years old. And just two days back, we had a class and he said, um, uh, we were talking about news and he was talking about news and then he's asking me, what is a feature news? So I said, well, uh, the feature news would be that COVID is increasing and, uh, you know, things are happening and uh, things are going out of control. That would be feature news. And there comes the back answer after a week to you. I don't think you're being negative, mom. You're being totally negative. I don't think so. you should start news like that. You should always start news on a positive note that Corona is going away. So they are, they are picking you up. They're lifting you up. Yeah, absolutely. They're doing it back in front. But as moms, we keep thinking we are the ones who are doing it. I I also want to give credit to all the children on the other side, which we moms, I don't see. So we, we give them enough in difficult situations. We really step up. They really step up in difficult situations and show up in so many ways that sometimes goes unnoticed. So um, big, big... I keep telling him that, you know, I'm actually thankful that I have had the opportunity to be his mom, you know. Yes. I actually am thankful. Yes. Despite like you know everything that's happening and all of it, there are fun times. There are times that are a little difficult, yes. but uh, it's an opportunity that we get to play mom, the role of a mom, and you know. Absolutely, and we have Keetna joining us here as well. Jia is here, Keetna is here, Malik is here. Um, but uh, Keetna, you have to also stay back because Keetna is also one of the moms I get very inspired by, and I want Keetna to definitely watch this interview. Uh, uh, she will love it and you'll get to meet her in the book as well. So um, before we go and invite both your mom and your son uh, into the thing, um, just quick thing. Um, have you been in portraits with your son and you know in the last all these years do you think you've done any portraits of yourself or like all of us moms you've been hiding behind the camera and not showing up uh, in, in, in front of the camera for Various reasons that will unfold later when you part, become part of this book, but do you think this happened to you as well? So, um, on my own, I, I don't know if I would have taken so many portraits, but off late, my son is the most sensitive of the two of us. He always lands up putting his arm around me and when we are together and, you know, taking selfies and things like that. So, I, I think I have uh, pictures, I was looking at it. So at the old, earlier times, there aren't many pictures that I have, a few maybe, not as many as I would have liked. But now I think he does a lot of this of uh, getting pictures uh, clicked, you know, and, and I realize after my husband's gone that that's something that we should always do, you know, you otherwise don't have so many pictures. And I say this again and again to moms that, no matter what happens and this camera has made me realize so much um, and such a big movement has started and so many things have happened and it's happening on a daily basis um, that I can go on for hours about uh, what all is coming up for moms through this camera. But yes, the point that you've made is you can't hold on. You can't hold on to them like when they are gone, uh, we are gone. Yeah. Uh, they need the child needs to hold on to something. Uh, even if he's an eight-year-old child, he still needs to hold on. And his yeah. moms and their parents, uh, especially their mom's pictures, a lot of times they just want to have that thing. So gift it to them while while we are there, you know. And yeah. uh, and I'm glad your son is doing that. We're gonna get uh, we're gonna get them in, and I'm gonna have this conversation first with your mom that when you became one of the twelve um, twelve. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Air Force officer, the first batch uh, in India, uh, what did she feel like? Let's hear, hear her. So I'm going to get them in and um, all right, we're going to get admit Rajat and Pamita. Oi, I think, yeah, did yeah. I say? Yeah, right. it's Pamela, Pamela, she, she, her name is yeah. spelled differently at different all places. Them right so this is one of the most special interviews that the family has joined in. Um, <laughs> and uh, I wanted the family to join in because Hi, hi Rajat. Hello Shika. We've been talking about you and your mom has to switch on the camera as well. Ma, you have to switch on the camera. See that Ma sounds, even at this age, like the Ma of a little girl, right? Look at this <laughs> one that's there. So Ma will get there, I understand. Uh, okay, there's another, I think a Ma is coming with 
another admit and I'll have to, Ooh. that's okay. It happens. The two admits on her. So maybe, okay. so maybe she's, I told you, uh, though she's like super smart, she st still does online teaching. Sometimes she can be technologically challenged, but never mind. I'm technologically challenged even after 88 interviews. Uh, we, can, we can definitely give her a chance. Uh, um, Lakshmi is here joining in, who's introduced you to this. Uh, this yeah. She's here. She, she really told me that you must, you must, you must get her in. So that is a proud moment. Your mom is being honored as a mom, though she's been honored many times for many things in her life. But today she's being honored as a mom and uh, she's coming in uh, a book with 100 self-portrait, 100 dreams. Uh, and your mom is also going to do a self-portrait to tell a story in the book. And it's going to be a book across the world. 100 moms are joining. She's the 88th mom. And um, it's an honor to have your mom in. And I had to, you know, I had given up that she's not coming and I woke up and I was like, <laughs> you have to be in the book because I'm holding on to your story. Um, so while your mom joins in, Rajat, um, let's talk to you and uh, your, your, your mom has, in fact, you, you're actually, you are also in my, uh, in my uh, heart as a story because I have a two-year-old. And now I'm comparing all the two-year-olds to you in Ladakh and Leh when you were in Ladakh and Leh. All being wrapped up and when your mom told me that uh, you know you used to be wrapped up and you had the same meal I'm telling my children you can have the same meal twice at least because Rajesh has had that meal for one and a half years right so that's how this book is inspiring many mothers uh, with little, little stories being extracted that's the inspiration so let's uh, let's hear your your uh, your what like you've heard your mom was one of the first 12 women Air, Air Force officers and I don't know whether you remember Ladakh at all. Let's hear a little bit about your mom and gift her this moment of life, honoring her as a mom by a son right now here. So let's hear what you have to say about your mom. Sure, thank you. And uh, you're spot on those, those uh, memories. <laughs> they're, um, I mean, they're very precious ones, I suppose. But firstly, I don't know how my mom feels about being outed as the 88th mom to be, you know, celebrated because very often all through my childhood, she has always been perceived as my sister, you know, a friend of mine from, from school, like anytime we'd be hanging around like in our local community. Um, and just by the sheer fact that she is so energetic and so bubbly and lively and like so beautiful as well, um, that I haven't heard the end of it. So, you know, this is a new transition, Ma, finally being recognized as a mom. Recorded as your mom. <laughs> exactly. You were a mom in your life you realized it for the first time. You can thank me for that. But yeah, you <laughs> know, her as a mom for sure. Uh, she is, she's amazing and she's what an inspirational uh, journey. Um, uh, and uh, this is an opportunity for you to actually go live because I keep telling her these interviews are going to get rotated and this is going to become an historical interview as well uh, with the son honoring. She deserves a standing ovation not only from this country for being one of the first 12 women officers but also from a son uh, for being a pillar and now I'm coming to know that you're also a friend and um, oh yeah 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 nice. oh, no doubt I mean we both are very close yeah 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 I, I think, think something which has been so phenomenal um, with this relationship in particular and you know I mean I don't think I say it enough but I'm immensely immensely appreciative of that is that my mom is constantly growing like even today I feel she has more of a hunger to learn to change to challenge her mindsets today than I am at 25 and uh, that kind of sets the bar for me as well as to how I should want to live my life. Um, just this New Year's, she decided she wanted to have a solo trip. And so she, off she went to Greece just because she wanted to restructure. How does she want to approach the world? What is important to her? What are her value systems? To ask these questions to herself at present and constantly grow, you know, moving to another country, setting up a base there. Um, even with me, honestly, like as I was going through college, um, there was some parts of, you know, family turmoil, which made dealing with college experiences really, really difficult. And I mean, we've come from a traditional Indian upbringing. She was in the Air Force, um, you know, education, number one, no compromise, work hard, get what you, 
um, deserve. You know, that was the that was the mental upbringing. But after that, to have to you know welcome more of conversations about mental health, more about you know family is important, your health is important, rather than this quote unquote success ladder, which my mom was very much on and achieved so much on as part of being you know brought up in that environment she just completely shifted her mindset and it's just been so loving and so receptive and 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 I could see it was difficult for her you know I could see that day in and day out she had to keep challenging things that she thought was the way life needs to be lived and she's just trying to accommodate me and be so loving and giving and so kudos like I mean just interacting with her is uh I don't appreciate it enough. I know. I take it for granted how lucky I am. But uh, genuinely, a rock, an anchor, uh, an inspiration. So, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is a gift I could give to your mom, Rajat. So You're the only, only child who's been allowed in the 88 interview. So many moms are allowed here. So oh, I wow, cool. Um, I probably... Uh, did not witness her being honored by the president of this country when she was one of the first 12 uh, moms. But as a citizen of this country, I want to honor her. And what better honor than actually listening to your son. Sakita, did you actually hear that? Yeah, yeah. Because all this while your mom is feeling that you've been inadequate as a mom, they didn't do a good job. And I was telling her, all of us moms feel that. But did you hear that? And I was just telling her, you know what? Our children see us. Our children see us. They exactly know what we are and they exactly will you know uh, know who we are and what we've done uh, they just don't speak up or we don't give them opportunity to speak up because we're always talking to them as moms and uh, Rajat you did it as such a, I'm so proud of you how incredibly you um, whatever a little I know of your mom I know her very little but I will know her even more very soon once she's part of these hundred moms uh, group and uh, for her for her to take these journeys for her to take a decision of even taking you to these places where, you know, that itself being a young mom, being able to take you and with the confidence that I can take my child there, you'll be absolutely okay. I'm sure she feared many things, but she let the fear go off and she's like, he'll be absolutely fine eating that potato and that, um, you know, rice and that dal, and then he'll be fine if I leave her, leave him behind with the bachelors who don't know how to take. Like I would get a heart attack uh, leaving my child to a bachelor that too in a place with no oxygen and you know uh, going out for six, seven, eight hours and oh my god. And that's why I sent a personal message right now to the group. I said, please join the interview and this interview is going to uh, really inspire many moms because that's how we need to be. We fear so much. And I must say that each mom in this book, like each mom who's come in this book by the universe together has this incredible story. Some some stuff that I just get, and I'm totally emotional listening to you because I'm a mom of two boys. And what your mom was just saying, I feel like that already. I'm like, oh, I'm inadequate. I can't do this. I'm not good. I'm not bad. You know, exactly what she's saying, exactly what our other 188 mom, moms have said. <laughs> There's a voice of a son, and you became the voice of all the children that uh, we did interview in the thing, honor mothers. So hats off to you, Rajat, and um, very proud of you to actually do a great job of even honoring your life in this interview. Thank so you. Thank May you. I actually I'm just proud. give one one example of, yes. of exactly what you were saying, Shikha? Um, this is kind of just cemented in my head. I, I I completely understand what you said about my mom, you know, perhaps feeling inadequate and sometimes of not having been you know the ideal mom she's we've had conversations like this before you know and she she says that she has this regret and da, da, da. but one moment is like etched in my mind and mom and i keep talking about it as well is um when i was a kid this is maybe like 12 13 or something you know like wake up super late you drink your dude and then you're like running to school and sometimes i'll forget my backpack and you know there's a whole rush and everything and mom is like up at the break of dawn and then back home at night by about like eight nine and she's just hustling 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 and so then I'm out of the shower and I need an ironed like shirt to go into school right and so like literally if you're looking at that scenario it's like hustle bustle brush and then mom is like ironing my clothes throwing it at me I'm putting it on and running out and then she like she spoke to me one day like many years later and being like you know I really regretted that 
I wish I could have, um, you know, ironed your clothes at night and you'd have like a peaceful way to get up and go to school and I could give you more time. And I just turned around and said, the best part of my morning was coming out of the shower when I was feeling cold and having a hot shirt and bunny and then like chaddis and everything, like wearing that, heading out. So I think you need to really give that um, uh, perspective, like you said, like the kids see it in such a different light as opposed to how the mom may be interpreted because you always want to do more for us, but yeah. it's enough. Like, thank you, you know, like... Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Well, I'm fine laughing right now because you did not hear the interview. Just before you were admitted into the room, she was already talking about your bomb shirt and... <laughs> oh, good job! <laughs> well, because I was just saying that all of us feel like that. And <laughs> no, I don't see, uh, this is what I say, it's a beautiful moment and your mom, you didn't know your mom was talking about that and you just said, oh, may I tell you this? And both of us were quietly listening to it because we had heard this <laughs> before you were admitted about the one you know and here is your mom's mom yeah hi the party of uh, honoring your daughter um and this is a proud moment that we've got three generations together not happened in the 88 interviews was not planned she offered i said yes and she's like fine it was first the mom coming and then like what about my son? I'm like, fine. <laughs> and so he would have also joined in the party for sure to honor this beautiful woman we have here. So um, we're going to take the spotlight to your grandmom now, Rajat, and welcome. And I've been hearing about you from Sangeeta, and you're a mom. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> Thank you for having me here. <laughs> I, 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 I had to I had to get your daughter here. I literally said this book can't happen without you reading the book. So please, please let's let's have her. Um, so I, I I believe that you are the pillar behind her uh, who encouraged her to reach there. Yeah. Let's probably, yeah, probably in the past. Now I think she is my pillar of strength well, now. That's what, children do. that's what children do. They become their pillar and now Rajat is hers. So we keep passing this way. But um, let's take you back when uh, your daughter first uh, entered the Air Force and then she became the first 12 women officers yes. and you got the news. Yes. Go back to that moment because that's the mother's moment that we're going to celebrate here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you. How did you feel about it? Well, uh, I, I, I can express only one word, mighty proud, mighty proud that my daughter went into a field where no woman had gone in India. So that gave me, uh, I can't tell you, such a lot of uh, pride in me and my husband. Uh, and uh, it's like she carried on the tradition in the family. So as you said, as you asked me how I felt, well, uh, proud beyond words that she had achieved something which nobody else had, no other woman had. And besides, she's been such an independent person. She's done it all herself by herself that makes me even more prouder that way yes <laughs> been very proud and very happy yeah she uh, in fact she has fulfilled um her dad's dream to an extent you could say yes <laughs> she's um uh she definitely draws a lot of inspiration from uh, all of you and uh, and uh, it's not only a proud moment for you it was a proud moment for the whole country to find the first 12 women and it should have not gone unnoticed. And that's why Ashka Khanna entered in her life and then forced it out to be honored first as an officer and then as a mom. And then um, uh, her journey as a mom has been incredible as well. Yes, yes. It's a great moment to have all of you together to salute her for who she is as an op because this 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 doesn't happen often. We don't, we, I mean, just not as difficult situations as an army officer. And then being for like women are there, women were not there. That was tough enough. Then being pregnant is next level. Yes. Having a child and taking the child to make yes. it is another level. And then whatever happened till today. Um, so uh, she's a definitely, uh, I'm telling her that she has a book in her. Um, I would encourage her to write a book uh, for sure. Uh, and, yeah, I, I would, I would second you. <laughs> I would really want that to happen. Honestly, she should. She should and she could. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Deepa, honestly. And uh, uh, the fact that 
as she has uh, gone through all the trials and tribulations of her life herself and yes. on her own uh, shows extreme uh, courage and confidence that she's had my daughter yes. and uh, they could be uh, nobody uh, who could feel uh, humbled uh, to have given birth to such an extraordinary child, uh, an absolutely extraordinary child. She's remained uh, uh, intelligent and bright right from her birth, I could say, to recall some of those small time incidents that uh, she would, as a babe in arms, she would go about, uh, you know, uh, uh, coming out with the phonetic sounds from then it starts right till her uh, days where she goes through her college education on her own, her master's degree on her own, she decides and always a compassionate heart for her parents, uh, knowing exactly how much she could, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, get from her parents, knowing all that, uh, the army way, the army way of being brought up an army child. Uh, she had all that compassion in her understanding. Uh, of the situation so beautifully. And the most important thing that I'm so very proud about her is the fact that when she went uh, through the hardest phase of her life, uh, she didn't crumble like the uh, most other women would do or probably come back to her, her uh, mother. No, she didn't come back as a, a woman totally lost. No, she didn't do that. Uh, she fought it and where she is today, is uh, purely out of her her courage and her uh, and her um, you know on her determination uh, to be a wonderful uh, mother to a bright boy like my grandson and yes today she stands there as my a pillar to her mother actually she by the way <clears throat> and she uses the phone of course she uses the phone uh, to keep me moving with times and to be a smart mother, as she calls me. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Sangeeta. I'm proud of you. I wanted her to live, relive uh, that, that spotlight again, uh, because it should not be forgotten. She, yes. led, she led many women in this country, and she made it possible with the 12 women in 24,000 forms uh, yes. as an Air Force officer. As a first batch of Air Force officer, I get goosebumps even hearing it that I'm sitting with her. And this is something that she might think is one of the things, but it's actually very beautiful. And I wanted to relive this with this special honor. Yes, we don't have the president of this country this time, but we do have. <laughs> Thank you. I have, <laughs> I have the most important people <laughs> in my life. So. Somebody else trying to join in called Kalpana Sanjay. <laughs> I, I think her, her relatives are all there. Oh, really? No. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. Yeah. All right. So we have a lot of people commenting here. Uh, Kirtana is here. Uh, Kirtana, you get to meet her uh, in the in the group now of the 100 moms. And Lakshmi is here who introduced you. Lakshmi, she is honor her in the book and um, yes uh keep blessing th uh, thanks for making her part of our tribe honored thank you lakshmi is thanking and yes she's uh, she's she's going to shine here as well and we're very proud of you and honestly i am going to keep saying this again and again it's an honor that you let women in this country at the time when there were no air force officers and you just mentioned there were mud houses and rajat stayed in those mud houses you're lucky you have a story to tell <laughs> I've been to Leh and Ladakh uh, for a thing and I know how difficult it is to be there. Uh, I'm not taking my child for a, by the way, uh, uh, just for another car ride there because I just knew what the car journey was and you took a two year old for one and a half year there. So you, you're, you're teaching a lot and what is possible is what is possible when Sangeeta steps in. So it's an honor to uh, step in. Uh, welcome to the book, Sangeeta. You get to meet 88 other incredible women and very soon we're wrapping this up with 100 women uh, on the 3rd of February. I've announced it. That's the day. I was meant to finish it, honestly, in 100 days, 100 women. And then at 75, you know, I had a little accident with my two-year-old and I had to stop the interviews uh, because I was being a caregiver there and I had to stop all interviews. But everything happens for a reason because at that time when I was sitting in the hospital with him and I'm just like, okay, 
if those hundred moms can do it, so can I, because many of them went through 18 surgeries for their children. Many of them were told that children will not survive and they survived. Many of them, you know, survived abuse. So many things have happened to these moms. And you all gave me inspiration. And then there was a reason that Samita needed to come. That's why I did not end um, uh, on uh, 8th of November and it's here in January. Uh, yeah. still 12 more minutes coming in, so I'll request everybody to just keep tuning in next 12 days we finish it off. Uh, Sarah, I'm here. Sarah is here. Good morning, Sarah. And all these moms you'll get to meet and we're going to create a self-portrait. You're going to see your mom telling her story through a self-portrait, Rajat. Yeah. <laughs> That's another <laughs> mother also. Mother's also going to see. <laughs> yeah. I'm so proud. So oh, yeah. proud. Thank you so much for joining in and uh, we, uh, Sarah, See the replay. This is very special. You have to see the replay. Um, thank you. And I will go off live and make you join the tribe. Uh, Sangeeta, welcome to the book. Thank and you. We'll take this book and this message to many moms who need to hear these messages. And you're going to be voiced to many moms who are still thinking, should I take my child? Should I not take my child? Should I do it? Should I not do it? And they'll do it because Sangeeta did it. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm humbled. Thank you. And I'm going to go off live. You guys stay back. Before I say thank you, bye bye to all of you. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. No, you can be live now. You can see that.